In this online lecture, we're going to be looking at more ways of using conversions. We're going to see how to use conversions when you have a unit that's raised to a power. And we're going to see how to do conversions when you have to do more than one step. So let's go ahead and first let's look at doing conversions when the unit is raised to a power. When you have a unit that's squared or a unit that's cubed, that means that they are the units times each other. For instance, centimeter squared is centimeter times centimeter, and inch cubed is inch times inch times inch. When we go to do a conversion, we have to take that into account. So, for instance, here we have 42 inches squared. The inches squared is inch times inch. If all we were to do is multiply by 2.54 centimeters over an inch, we would not be converting the inches squared to centimeters squared. We would convert it only one of those inches to a centimeter. So then the product of 42 inches squared times 2.54 centimeters over inch would be inch times centimeter. So to get both inches converted to centimeters, we have to do that conversion twice. Likewise, if we have 6.1 times 10 to the 4 meters cubed, we've got to convert each one of those meters. So three times, or cubing the conversion factor does the same thing, three times we've got to multiply by kilometers over 1,000 meters. And then that will give us kilometers cubed because each meter has to be multiplied by one conversion factor. So there must be three conversion factors in there. When you are going from one prefix to another within the metric system, sometimes you don't know the relationship. I've been using the metric system a long time, so I know that there are a thousand micrograms in a milligram. However, you may get that relationship wrong if you're just trying to remember it. Many people do, unless they're using the metric system over and over and over again. So the best thing to do is to use your base unit and the prefix system so that you get your relationship correct. This is an example. How many milligrams is in 23 micrograms? You start with 23 micrograms, and what you're going to do is go from microgram to gram. Uh, the relationship is a microgram is 10 to the minus 6 grams, so I have that as my first conversion factor. So I'm going through the base unit now. This actually tells me how many grams I have in 23 micrograms. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from gram to milligram. I can get my relationship be from a prefix with a base unit to a base unit and then from the base unit to another prefix quite easily. Getting from a prefix with a unit to a prefix of the, with a unit is requires a lot of memorization and you may not get it correctly every time. So this basically is the best way to go from one metric unit to another when you don't know a relationship between the two. Many times you have units in the denominator. For instance, here we have kilogram in the denominator. This is a dosage, 2.5 milligrams to kilogram. If I want to know how many milligrams are in a pound, I can convert kilogram to pound. But you have to see, you see that kilogram is in the denominator of this fraction. So when I go to uh, convert from kilogram to pound, I need to make sure that I get unit cancellation. Kilogram in the denominator in the beginning means I have to have kilogram in the numerator of my conversion factor. So make sure you're getting unit cancellation and that you're, uh, you're not uh, orienting your fraction incorrectly. Look for unit cancellation.
Just remember, this is, uh, I already introduced this idea to you, that a cubic centimeter is equal to a milliliter. So when you have centimeter cubed, you can replace it with milliliter. And uh, it's an expression that I expect you to remember and be able to use. So here are some problems for you to do. And what I'd like you to do is to pause the lecture and try each problem. And then you can resume and we can work through them together. To do this problem, we need to first start with our given. You notice it says 49 meters per second. Second is after the per, so it goes in the denominator. Now I need to convert this to kilometers per hour. That means I need to have kilometers in the numerator and hour in the denominator. There's two conversions here. One conversion is from meters to kilometers, and the other is from seconds to hours. You can do all of these in one mathematical sentence. You don't have to break it up into individual conversions. It doesn't matter which one you start with, multiplication, um, it doesn't matter what order you do your multiplication is, as long as it's all multiplication or division, your answer will be the same regardless of what order you do it in. So we can start with going from meter to kilometer, and you see I've oriented it so that meter and kilometer cancel out. Next, I can go from seconds to minutes. Now, you might have said, oh, well, I want to go from seconds to hours directly, and that's fine if you know a relationship between seconds and hours. But I'm going to go from seconds to minutes, and then from minutes to hours, and that will work out also. Now I need to make sure that each one of my fractions is equal to 1. Kilo equals 1,000, so kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. How many seconds are in a minute? Well, most of you know that 60 seconds are in a minute. And then how many minutes are in an hour? Well, 60 minutes is in an hour. And th after I do this math, 49 divided by 1,000 times 60 times 60, you'll, you should get 176 as your answer. And notice how the units work out. Meters cancels out. Minutes cancels out seconds cancels out. The units that remain are meters, excuse me, kilometers over hours, which is what answers the question. In this next problem, what we need to do is first realize that I need to get to my volume by multiplying the dimensions times each other. So 12 times 19 times 40 gives me 9,120 centimeters cubed. I can go from centimeters cubed to milliliter, and then I can go from milliliter to liter. The first fraction is already equal to 1 because 1 milliliter is 1 centimeter cubed. But I need to make the next fraction equal to 1, so I add 10 to the minus 3 to liter because milli equals 10 to the minus 3. So milliliter is 10 to the minus 3. I then do my calculations, and I come up with 9.12 liters. Of course, this answer is not expressed with significant figures. If we were going to express this with significant figures, it would only be 9.1 liter. But not, we're not going to be worrying about significant figures in this course.